Welcome back, Flare community. Today, we are going to be learning all there is to know about decentralized exchanges, also known as DEXs, as part of my DeFi series. If you would like an overview of what DeFi or decentralized finance actually is, please feel free to view the linked video above to gain a base foundation of knowledge on the subject. Let's get started. Exchanges, what are they? If you've invested in cryptocurrency, it's highly likely you have come across an exchange. Exchanges are used as a platform for users to trade assets, whether that's stocks, precious metals, currencies, or digital assets. Traditionally, your trades would be executed by a centralized authority a company which has developed software to help facilitate the trading of their users in return for a small fee. In recent years, we have seen a rise of decentralized exchanges, which require no centralized authority and offer some unique benefits compared to their centralized counterparts. Let us distinguish some of the key differences between both centralized and decentralized exchanges. Centralized exchanges trade off-chain. When you make a trade, the exchange will simply debit one account and credit another. There is no transfer of value, just numbers on a screen. As nothing is happening on the actual blockchain, this is considered off-chain. When you withdraw or deposit cryptocurrencies to a centralized exchange, this transaction is considered on-chain as it's moving from one wallet, your wallet, to their wallet, the exchange's wallet. In contrast, decentralized exchanges operate exclusively on-chain, meaning when you make a trade, the actual value is sent there and then from one wallet to another. Because of this fact, there are differences in the speed at which an exchange can operate. A centralized exchange can execute many trades per second, with exchanges like Binance claiming they are able to process up to 1.4 million trades per second. This is due to the very small computational power required to execute these trades. It is essentially just an update in a database, as the value is not actually transferred and still remains in the exchange's wallet. This simplicity allows for great throughput. Now, when we compare that to a decentralized exchange where the value is sent with every transaction, it can seem much slower. Something to realize is that DEXs are as slow or as fast as the protocol which they run on. For example, a decentralized exchange built on top of the XRP ledger, such as that being built by the Sologenic team, will be both fast and cheap. When you compare that to an Ethereum decentralized exchange, you can see a big discrepancy in fees, and this is due to Ethereum's proof of work consensus algorithm. This is also the reason why no one has built a Bitcoin decentralized exchange. It would be extremely slow and extremely expensive. Another big difference between decentralized and centralized exchanges is the fees. Centralized exchanges charge a fee for their matching service. Decentralized exchanges derive their fees from the protocol itself. One of the main benefits of decentralized exchanges is the fact that your assets never have to leave your wallet. You remain the custodian at all times. When you want to trade with a centralized exchange, you have to send your crypto to their wallet. Another difference I want to talk about is permission and censorship. When you register for a centralized exchange, they have the power. You are often required to perform KYC checks or know your customer. They make the rules and can stop you at any time if they wish to do so. If you're trading on a decentralized exchange, you have nothing to worry about. There is no third party to say what you can and cannot do. 
you are in complete control and can make any trade that you wish. Now let's delve a little bit deeper into decentralized exchanges. There are two main types, order book decentralized exchanges and liquidity pool decentralized exchanges. Order book decentralized exchanges are exactly what you would expect and very similar to many of the centralized exchanges you may already be familiar with. Examples of these include Switchio, Nash, Sologenic, and the XRP Ledger itself. They are based on users placing an order which represents a trade someone wishes to make. People can put orders to buy and people can put orders to sell. As more people place orders, the spread is reduced, creating better prices for those wishing to trade. In addition, the order book becomes deeper, meaning more liquidity is available. Liquidity is important to allow for bigger transactions without dramatically affecting the price of a given asset. The orders are organized by the software and then matched if a trade is available. For example, if a user wanted to buy a Spark token for $1 and another user wanted to sell Spark token for $1, the software would facilitate this transaction and credit each user accordingly. So now let's talk about the other main type of decentralized exchange, the liquidity pool decentralized exchange. Example of liquidity pool DEXs include Uniswap, SushiSwap, OneInch, Kyba Network, and of course, Flare Finance's Flare X. As discussed earlier, an order book decentralized exchange can be considered peer-to-peer. -peer. That's two people swapping assets with each other on chain. Liquidity pool DEXs, however, are not peer-to-peer -peer and can instead be considered peer-to-smart contract. I would now like to introduce you to a new term, Automated Market Makers or AMM. Automated market makers have changed the decentralized finance game. This is a significant innovation that allows for on-chain trading without the need for an order book. When you're executing a trade on this type of decentralized exchange, you're executing the trade against the liquidity in the liquidity pool. So you may be wondering what a liquidity pool is. Well, it's not a pool of water. A liquidity pool is a bunch of funds deposited into a smart contract by liquidity providers. For example, if you were part of the Flare Finance beta competition, you may have provided liquidity by supplying equal amounts of two different assets. This process interacts with a smart contract and for providing the liquidity, you will receive a liquidity pool token or an LP token for short. This represents your contribution to that specific pool. For a buyer to buy in a liquidity pool DEX, there doesn't need to be a seller at that particular moment, like what is required with an order book decentralized exchange. Only sufficient liquidity in the liquidity pool is required. The smart contract will distribute the fees generated from buying and selling the assets to users who are supplying the liquidity. Supplying liquidity for liquidity pools does in fact inherit a risk of impermanence loss, but this is going to be a topic for another day. I hope this has given you clarity on the two main types of decentralized exchanges and how they differ from their centralized counterpart. I would like to give a special mention to Banjo Samurai, who has created a great video covering Flare Finance's decentralized exchange, Flare X, and more specifically, earning fees and the risks associated with liquidity pools. If you're yet to check it out, I'll put a link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like. And if you want more content like this in the future, please feel free to subscribe too. I appreciate you watching, enjoy the rest of your day, and until next time, I'm out.